what's up guys, David Nader 1, 2 and 2, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day. One of my only things I do anymore because it's all I have time. <laughs> and instead of getting back to my top 10 best cards in every main set of the game, I decided to take one more week off of that and do a fun list that one of my subscribers actually sent to me over on the Facebook. So if you guys want to get a hold of me, I have now a Twitter and a Facebook, and I, like, I think you can talk to me on Patreon, but that's a real, that, that's a clumsy way of doing it. That's for giving me money, not for talking to me. Just use them, why don't you? Just use them! But in order to do this funsy list, I also got my buddy Jason to help me out because um, I scare him still. You, yeah, he threatened me otherwise. <laughs> and this list is the top 10 best video game promo cards in, in Yugi, Yugi Man's. Basically, whenever we would get one of the Yu-Gi-Oh! video games, whether it was for PC, DS, Game Boy, or whatever, normally they would include one to three cards in that game, uh, like actual TCG legal cards, that you could actually use in the TCG, like real life gameplay, not just the gate cards that actually come on the disc or whatever it is. And these are the top 10 best cards of that set. Uh, I did exclude two games. One was like an Elemental Hero box set. It came with a deck and packs and like one of the random ADS games, I think, but it didn't have a card list, so I couldn't tell you what was in it. And I'm pretty sure it was probably all reprints anyway. And the other one was like uh, like some weird GX game, but all the pu all the cards in it were just pieces of Exodia. So I, that, that just that's all it was. It just came with five pieces of Exodia. It was some random GX game. I don't know. Without further ado, let's get started. And here's Jason with number ten. Number ten on our list is Wormbait from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's Tag Force 4. Uh, Wormbait is actually a very simple card. It allowed, if you control an insect monster, you get special summon two insect tokens. Back then, it wasn't really all that good. Now with Link summoning and things like that, that card can actually prove to be quite more valuable. The only drawback to using Wormbait was that the turn you used it, you could not normal summon or special summon any level three or level four monsters. But now that we have Link monsters pretty much fully active in the game, that really doesn't stop you for what you would use it for now. Because they don't have levels. <laughs> Do I really got to tell them that? <laughs> Number nine is Nurse Wreckfuel the Fallen One, or Dark Lord Nurse Wreck Wreckfuel Wreck Wreck Wreckfuel. Refus Kuehl? I actually, this is one of my favorite cards that I have no idea how to pronounce its name. Dark Nurse Ref, 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 Refuel. Ref, Refuel. She's like a Silent Hill villain. Dark World Nurse. She's not Dark Lord Nurse Refuel is from the game uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force Evolution for the PS2. This dark level 4 fairy turns any effect that would gain your opponent life points into burn damage instead. So if you activate that legendary gift card, instead of 3k life point gains, it's 3k burn damage. It's basically why you call the deck Nurse Burn, and we actually moved 9 and 10 around just so I could talk about this. You just couldn't just hold it in, could you? Nah, <laughs> it's, nah. It's not Jason's fault. Dick Brian. How about Dick Rub? How about that? <laughs> Don't put that in there. <laughs> Number eight on our list is the Counter Trap Dark Bribe from the GX Tag Force 2. Dark Bribe is actually a very simple card. You use it to negate any spell or trap card, and the only thing that happens is you give your opponent one card. So if you negate that right card that's gonna, you know, stop you from winning game, you take it out, didn't have to pay nothing. It's, one, not, it's, it's not the greatest way of negating stuff, but what it's like, your options are like get evenly matched or they draw a card. I guess okay. I'll let them draw a card, right? Yeah, let them like, draw a card. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> Come on, you think uh, what's what's the card that's very popular on the counter trap? The one that negates a trap card and flips it face down. Oh, the red reboot? Yeah. Think about it. If you negate the effect of red reboot with that, you get to keep activating your trap this cards. Isn't going. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm just talking to you right now. <laughs> I was done after the whole yeah, the only were. negative part was there and you just kept talking to me. Why do you think I'm off to the side? Number seven is Spell Striker from another GX game, uh, World Championship 2007 for the Nintendo DS. Spell Striker is one of those weird cards that comes in and out of play due to the fact that it's a free special summon by banishing one spell card from your graveyard. He's a level three Earth Warrior, making him perfect synchro, link, or exceeds material, and the fact that he can attack directly means what if it's getting down to the wire and those new and your match procedure is about to bone you in the booty, you can always just, you know, bink, 
Also, you don't take any battle damage from attacks involving this card, so if your opponent retaliates and smacks a little spell striker in the face, you don't have to worry about taking damage. Obviously, its, it's best function is the fact that you could probably make a Zold with it, so like... Easy. Yeah. But, so it gets like better. It's like a wine, it, it ages well. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure anyone's playing right now because like the only deck you'd probably play it in would be like either Goki, Goki or- Dark Warrior. I mean, I don't think they any of them are, but you could. You wouldn't play in spells or Sky Strikers because you don't want to banish stuff out of your graveyard. You asking me or you're telling me? I'm telling you. you Te I'm pensively telling <laughs> you. <laughs> Number six on our list is the trap card, Dimensional Prison. You almost said barrier, didn't you? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because only one dimensional counts nowadays. Dimensional uh, Fissure? Uh, okay, two dimensional <laughs> cards. <laughs> you gotta come up with another one? God dang it, interrupt Dim this. Dimension... The, the dice. dice. <laughs> dimensional Prison from 2008 World Championship, the Yu-Gi-Oh game for the DS, reads, when your opponent's monster declares an attack, target that monster and banish it. Now at this time, we really didn't have a lot of no-cost banishing cards. So when this came into play, going around the destruction of a lot of monsters and removing them fur further from play, it was actually really useful. I'm not gonna say barrier. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Number five is Galeas the Starbeast from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force 3. Jaden killing it? He really is. Like, <laughs> as bad as his main sets of the game are, his, his video game promos are lit. Like, what the, what the freak, Jaden? Galeas the Starbeast is one of the strangest cards on the list, because if you'd asked me this, like, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago, I probably would have laughed at you and said this card was completely irrelevant, because it kind of was. However, this strange perfect storm kind of coalesced to make this card absolutely broken due to the fact that we had Master Rule 4 come out, Light of Sekka, and the fact that like, things like Terror Top are now on the Forbidden Limited list, meaning that Burning Abyss is ever digging for any other level 3 that can special summon itself and make Dante. And the cool thing about Galeas of Starbeast is it might even uniquely work in Burning Abyss better than some of those other things, even like what Spell Striker would simply because of its summoning condition. You can reveal this card from your hand and then mill one card off the top of your deck. If that card was a monster, your opponent takes burn damage equal to its level times 200, and then you get to special summon this monster. If it wasn't, you just you just destroyed this thing. All level three of special summons itself and the fact that it's milling a card off the top of your deck in Burning Abyss is exactly what they want to do. It's like it mills like Dante while you're on the way to making Dante. It's kind of dumb. And with the new version of the deck playing Sekka's Light, you're almost completely 100% guaranteed to hit a monster because you're playing like only like what, three spells in the entire deck? Three copies of Sekka's Light. And if you had copies of Sekka's Light, that's not even terrible. Like you can always just banish it and add another copy. So it's kind of like, I fit my own deck out. Really good. Actually, it's a really <laughs> fantastic card for the deck. So like I said, Perfect Storm made this card broke. So, woot. Number four on our list is the normal spell card, Mind Control. I swear I get the easiest names out of everyone. <laughs> I, was I was half expecting you to call it Brain Control. <laughs> it would have been almost as accurate, but no, this is... It, would you stop that? Mind Control comes from the 2005 World Championship Series. Seven Trials to Glory! <sighs> Mind Control is literally a normal spell card that reads target one monster your opponent controls and add it to your side of the field until the end of the turn. And while that card is on your side of the field, it cannot attack or be tributed. Now, back then, that was a little restricting, but after the introduction to the Synchro era and everything else thereafter, you can sacrifice monsters without never really tributing, so Mind Control has literally one of those cards that have gotten better progressively over time with the new summoning mechanics that happened. Especially if you steal a Link monster. Oh, it's just broken. <laughs> Number three is Anti-Spell Fragrance. Yeah, this thing was a video game promo card. It came from a PC game called Yu-Gi-Oh! Power of Chaos, Yu-Gi the Destiny. I actually remember this. I think I had Joey the Passion when I was... <laughs> That's what it was called! Basically, you had like two sets of the game and like the starter decks and it just taught you how to play. And it had like a cheesy campaign mode, if I remember correctly. Oh. I almost could remember the cheesy music too. I must have played it into the dirt because it was like the only way I could play Yu-Gi-Oh on a computer at the time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, any spells a continuous floodgate trap card that reads, both players must set spell cards before they activate them and they can't activate them until the start of their next turn. Uh, so if you set an MST, you cannot use it on your opponent's turn. Don't let your opponent do that to you. 
Days Gotta Wait. Obviously this card is really fantastic because any spell centric deck gets slowed down by an entire turn, which pretty much destroys any advantage of having like a bunch of quick play spells like Sky Strikers because now they're playing Palio at that point, basically. <laughs> and if your opponent happens to be playing a Pendulum deck, like, I don't know, maybe Ryan, for instance, Ryan is gonna be super salty because you're not allowed to set Pendulum cards into your Pendulum scale. You simply can't do it. It's not, it's not a viable mechanic. So you just simply can't play Pendulums, <laughs> which is just really funny. <laughs> there really isn't many Floodgates in this game that completely shut down an entire mechanic in the way that any spell shuts down pendulums by simply saying no you literally can't make that action it's not like you know it's negating the effects or something no it's like you literally just can't make that simple game action so it's kind of a dumb ruling but it is a great floodgate and this is one of those other cards that's just gotten better over time Ah uh, yes, I'm still here for number two because Jason didn't want to talk about it. Infernity Archfiend is number two, and this comes from another World Championship game. It's Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D Stardust Accelerator World Championship 2009. Every single one of these games is an absolute mouthful. <laughs> Rushif of Destruction. What does Rushif even mean? Is that a word? I don't know. Secretly, on the down low, the reason why Jason didn't want to talk about this card was he did not feel he could talk about Infernities as a deck, and he thinks I can any more than he can, and I absolutely can't. How Because <laughs> it is the womboist of wombo combo decks. I don't, I'm not even gonna pretend I know how to play it. However, what this card does basically, if you have no cards in your hand, you can special summon this card, and when it's summoned, you can search an Infernity card from your deck to your hand. You can't have any cards in your hand in order to to resolve the search effect, meaning that he has literally he has to be the last one, and then you can't ch chain something cheesy to it. However, it doesn't really matter. The other infernities, I think it's Necromancer. You can keep summoning this thing from the grave, and you keep searching cards. You keep just looping this damn thing, and eventually you can search like your entire deck. And like I just watched this replay video. This guy like trished his opponent like four times. <laughs> So like, Don't forget you summon Rionic just to throw cards back into Sam so you can trick. He played Levier like, like twice, like it was using like pre run So the cards that won for a very good reason, you just loop the crap out of it, you garner the advantage, and it works the way the Infernities are supposed to work, and that is not having any cards in your hand. I know enough top level information to make that statement with some level of assurity. <laughs> Assurance. Assurance. Insurance. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. Yes, do it! <laughs> are you in good hands? <laughs> Still makes me laugh. <laughs> All right, now comes the time which everyone loves is their honorable mentions. The honorable mentions for these games are Destiny Hero Disc Commander and Sinister Serpent. Right now, if I know Dave, he got them probably dancing around both sides of my head right now. <laughs> now, some people wonder, why would you put both of those cards on the honorable mentions list and not on the list themselves? It's because Arata killed them. They went from being completely dope and awesome to being eh. And yes, eh is a word right now. This commander reads, cannot be special summoned from the graveyard the turn it is sent there. If this card is special summoned from the graveyard, draw two cards. You can only activate the effect of Destiny Hero Disc Commander once per duel. So the card used to not say the first and the last sentence the way it used to be. It used to be summon in from the graveyard, draw two cards. And if you need an example of that, you should watch that whole uh, 2017 World Championship match between Astro Phoenix and Jack Atlas. So the Serpent on the other hand had a specific timing. If it was in the graveyard during your standby phase, you can add it back to your hand. Now, so the Serpent was awesome because it would be the perfect fodder for discard costs. It's literally not. It's 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 pretty dookie actually. I think I can say dookie, right? It's basically, uh, it, it vanishes if it if it's in your opponent's graveyard during their end phase. It vanishes, and you can end your That's what they change. You got that right. Good. All right. Today's dishonorable mention is perfectly ultimate great moth. Perfectly ultimate great moth cannot be normal summoned a set, and it must be special summoned after six turns with petite moth being on the field, equipped with cocoon of evolution. If you think about that. This monster was nothing more than a big dumb beater that you could only bring out if you waited six turns. If you stalled your opponent for six turns and they didn't get you back, one of y'all is not playing Yugi. I'm going to tell you that right off the bat, okay? <laughs> y'all sitting there twiddling your thumbs or jacking each other off. You know? <laughs> I don't understand how you survive six turns with the 2,000 defense. 
Nothing should last that dang long. Awesome. Even the Somebody just didn't win. Like. <laughs> Somebody was just, I want to see you do it. Now, <laughs> luckily, with the uh, cocoon Ultimate, of, cocoon? Ultimate Cocoon of Evolution. And a monster, a wild monster appears. That's the other thing. Oh, oh, thank you. A wild monster appears, an Ultimate Cocoon of Evolution. You can bring those cards out in turn one just by sending a insect that is equipped with the monster to the graveyard. So even though it makes your big dumb beater a lot more valuable, it's still dumb. It's perfectly ultimate waste of time. And today's sponsor is, as always, Meta Mats. If you want a custom cloth playmat, you can use my promo code Troll the Meta, and you'll get like 10% off your order. You get cool stuff like like they made my Davinator mat. Like it's got Ryan on one side, which is gonna probably get green screened out, and it's got it's got it's got me on this side. Isn't it cool. And then I got this Dark Magician girl one that I like. I, I like I like the I like Tan Dark Magician girl. Hot. She's like Arcana's Dark Magician girl, but she doesn't really exist. Well, Arcana card. doesn't deserve that right there. And then at the PPG tournament, they they had these like this the entry mats. And this this is, this is dope. <laughs> Backed up Brawly with the green. Oh my god, all that green has to be f up the green thing now. I, I probably I probably have turned the effect off at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, all they do is make really cool mats. So use my promo code and you get ten percent off. And uh, it's coolness. I don't know how to end this. That awkward sign off will be fine. <laughs> and number one is Harpy's Feather Duster from Yu Gi Oh! Worldwide Edition Stairway to the Destined Duel. Say that again, I bet you can't. Stairway to the Destined Duel. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say the Yu Gi Oh! Yu Gi Oh! Worldwide Edition <laughs> thing. <laughs> Do I even need to explain to you why this banned card is, is, is number one? It's a normal spell card that reads, destroy all spell and trap cards your opponent controls. No cost, it's just straight plusins. It's broke, and I really wish we had it. We have Regeki instead of this. The OCG has this. It's annoying. Fun fact, Stairway to the Destined Duel is actually one of the few of these games I actually distinctly remember owning. However, I had the Japanese version, and the reason why that was was because it came with like the first English print of the, uh, the God cards. But it was like the blue obelisk, red slifer, and yellow rock that ah, you can't actually you play. I actually great. wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. See, this is my old, this is my old binder from when I was like a kid. It's got all those cheesy stickers on it, and like, and there you go, there they are. Aww. Yeah, isn't that cool? Back when Yu Gi Oh was cool and slow. Yeah, and you can't even play these. But no, yeah. In the in the TCG version of the game, we got we got the Harpy's Feather Duster, which is actually a, a better card <laughs> than, than unplayable God cards. But the cool thing about that Japanese version was, if you were just could fumble through the menus on your Game Boy Advance and not know what you're clicking until you get the language, and they they split the language into flags instead of words, so you just find the American flag and click that, and then all turns to English. It wasn't region locked. I have no idea why you were actually allowed to use it on a on a, on a, a North American Game Boy, but because they didn't really care back then. No. But Nintendo would still region lock stuff, so I don't know why you're allowed to do it. But, eh, whatever. But yeah, Harpy's Feather Duster. It's fantastic. But anyway, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. Just kind of a fun thing. Uh, one of my subscribers actually had mentioned that I try making a deck out of every one of the uh, video game promo cards. Because they love to see you lose. And I didn't know how the hell I would do that, because most of them don't have a cohesive theme. I think the best you could do is make, like, a synchro deck with, like, Floor Synchron and the Stygians. How about that? How about we go with no? But instead, I decided, why don't we just talk about the best ones of the set because you know what there's some pretty nifty cards in here so anyway guys hope you enjoyed the list and remember guys if you don't troll the metal wheel i'll see you guys for the next list which is going to be gladiator assault oh hey losers what are you waiting for hit that subscribe button want to watch something else hurry up and choose one of these Ugh. When are you gonna make a choice? This year would be nice.